Hey everyone, welcome to this Tech Tuesday from t-rave.com. I am T-Rave, and I'd like to thank you for watching this show. If you watched last week, thank you for all you viewers. That's it was the numbers were just awesome, and I really appreciate it. And especially those people that actually comment on stuff. Uh, I do need, I do like that feedback, especially when it's constructive criticism, like a few of you did give. Now, a few of you did mention that you didn't really like how much I talked about Apple, and honestly, I can't blame you. Um, I talked about several things, and it was a BlackBerry review and overview, so it kind of, it kind of got skewed. I, I, I do apologize for that, and for the one comment out there, no, I am not trying to say everything is lesser than Apple. Absolutely not. Apple has a lot of flaws in itself. Uh, the BlackBerry from last week, if you pull anything away from it, it's a great device. Blackberries are great devices. Um, but going into today's episode, I thought I'd just share a lot of tech news that is really just floating around the web and uh, just deliver it to you guys. One of the ones that really has caught my eye is the new Intel i7 chip. Now this is going to be um, i7 has been around for the last year and a half or so, but the new one is going to be six cores. Um, it is dubbed the 980X, and it's just incredible, just incredible to think that processors are now moving up to six cores. Now, in my machine, I do have an i7, and it's a quad core, and honestly, I couldn't ask for a better processor. Um, well, I could. <laughs> I love the horsepower, but it is definitely a solid, solid chip, and thinking of six cores is just crazy. Um, a company by the name of Digital Storm is actually coming out with the 980X in it, and that computer is being dubbed the DaVinci. Now, it is definitely a gaming slash really workstation machine because it has a Quadro FX 1800 in it. Um, those are serious cards. Uh, it has 12 gig worth of RAM. That's just crazy, and it'll also cost you about five grand. Now, if you have that kind of money and you're really into gaming, or you really do 3D CAD or um, any other 3D whatever, <laughs> that would be the machine to maybe buy. Um, it's just it, again, it's just baffling to me uh, just the just the sheer progress of technology, especially in the last 10 years. EVGA is also launching a board that can accept these new 980X chips, and it has two spots for these chips. Um, the board will run you about 600 bucks, but it can also hold 48 gig worth of RAM. That's incredible. On top of, it has enough slots to do four GPUs. You can run them in SLI, or if you're an ATI fan, you can run them in cross, uh, Crossfire, and that is even more baffling. Uh, essentially, you'd have 12 cores at your fingertips, 48 gig worth of RAM, and all these, all these graphics cards. That's just crazy, and that would definitely be for you heavy-end editors um, slash just crazy people. Let's just put it that way. That's one heck of a machine. I kind of did some math and it would probably take you around 10 grand to really get it rocking. Way out of my blood. Speaking of CPUs, AMD is also coming out with uh, their X6 line. Now that's also going to be six cores and it is due out and uh, they're starting to come out in the second quarter of this year, 2010. So that's exciting to hear just another processor that's not really up in your face all the time. Uh, you know, with them acquiring ATI, you know, they're, they're a great chip, but you don't hear much about them, uh, especially on TV. You don't see commercials or ads primarily, you know, advertising them. So it's really cool to see kind of a flip on that instead of just having to think of Intel. Also with the AMDs, they are, there's a new netbook from MSI coming out that will also use, um, well, it'll use an AMD chip, um, a dual core. And so that just, that's awesome too because of, um, you know, netbooks have primarily been, uh, they've been Intel Atoms for the last two years. So that's awesome that a, uh, AMD is trying to get really get going back in the game. Now, moving on, last week I talked about the BlackBerry on Sprint. A day later, 
Sprint announced that the Google Nexus One is coming out on Sprint, and that makes me happy. It will be another Android phone on Sprint. They currently have uh, two, uh, two, <laughs> two phones, I believe, with a third kind of rumoring around. But this is, you know, Google, Google's Nexus One that is currently it's unlocked if you buy it. Uh, in the GSM variety in the United States, but you can only use it on T-Mobile. Verizon is set to be getting it this spring as well, so now Sprint is in the lineup. AT&T? Uh, I don't know. Where I don't, I can't speculate on that stuff, but it will probably get those adjustments. And speaking of AT&T, they are also getting the pre, the Palms, uh, Palms new, the new cell phones that Palm has been putting out. The Pre and the Pixie Plus. Um, the Pre Plus and the Pixie Plus are out on Verizon right now with Sprint having just the initial launch of the Palm Pre and Pixie. So that's cool that Palm is then now opening up too. And it's really exciting just to see all these cell phone companies kind of, you know, not getting these exclusive rights. Now, I think it's goofy. I really do to think that, oh, I want to go to that company because I just want that phone. Well, if you sign up for the two-year contract here in a year when you're eligible for upgrade, which would expand it for another two years or whatever, um, you're just looking at having this hardware that you're kind of locked down to. Now, if you're like me, you like to always get your hands on new gadgets, new tech, and you know, I just I think it's goofy, to, you know, to be like, oh, well, AT&T has this specific phone, whereas Sprint has this. I like this, um, that these cell phones are kind of coming out on all these uh, carriers so that you can uh, kind of, you can go with the best service, with the best prices that fits your lifestyle. Um, you're not locked down. It'd be sweet if uh, Droid, Mo Motorola Droid, uh, came out on Sprint and other ones. It looks like a great device. I've, you know, a lot of people like it. So that's cool. I, I think that's awesome that these companies are doing that. Nexus One on Sprint and the Palms coming out on AT&T later on this year. Now, to finish this off, uh, a few months ago, you might have watched the Drobo unboxing. I bought a Drobo and I just, uh, after spending that kind of money, I just didn't have the money to buy space for it, uh, buy the storage for it. So I actually got a really good deal on one terabytes and they are Hitachi um, uh, SATA drives. Um, got them for a little under 80 bucks uh, with free shipping. So it is very exciting um, to get those, to get those in and put them in my Drobo. If you can see back here, this is my Drobo right, right there. And those four dots, the, actually five dots, means that it's already halfway filled. Now I have another uh, one terabyte that I bought a while ago that needs to be RMA, and I'm planning on putting it in there and expanding the storage. Um, I have three in there currently, and it gives me about 1.8 terabytes worth of storage. If you're ever, ever looking for a really secure backup and you do have the money, Drobo is the thing to get. It's just simple plug and play. Essentially, you format, and then you just start writing to it. You just start throwing stuff at it, and if a drive dies, you pull it out, put in a new one. It's called Beyond RAID, their technology. Uh, RAID has been around for a long time, but their, uh, their custom system is called Beyond RAID, and that's what it does. It really keeps your stuff uh, really protected, and if you ever want to upgrade, you just simply pull one drive out and upgrade it, and you can have mismatched drives in there. Um, I like to keep them all, like, since I got the good deal of one terabytes, I just wanted them all to be the same. So that's awesome. That's really cool. I know my stuff is now protected. Uh, I would suggest you doing some research into that. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I, one of the comments below, I, I, my response was, I have never used an, this other device that you've talked about and I don't want to comment on it without using it. I am a firm believer that I do want to give you the best information I have. Um, I do have mistakes, I'm sorry. If I ever make a mistake, just let me know. It's cool, don't yell at me, just be like, hey, you kind of messed up on that. Um, a few months ago when I did the, the Intel Atom build, uh, I called it a micro ATX, I believe, or whatever. It's actually an ITX board micro ITX, and I could still be wrong, but someone corrected me on that. So please help me out. Make the show better by commenting. 
Um, but I do ask that for constructive criticism. Just don't be like, you suck, because I already know that. So thanks for watching this Tech Tuesday. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, check out t-rave.com for the vlogs and the, all the other Tech Tuesdays. And you have a great Tuesday.